Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Inventor's Quick Tips. In this episode, I want to show you a real-life case study in prototyping that I did a while back. I wanted to see what I could do with a Raspberry Pi for an aftermarket vehicle accessory. Note that I was not interested in trying to patent anything I'm going to show here, as I don't think it's anything that could be patented, but I thought you might enjoy having a look at the prototyping process. So again, my idea was to see what I could do using off-the-shelf, readily available components in order to provide some night vision assistance to a driver. I started out with the Raspberry Pi, which is a fully functional computer that can run in a headless mode, meaning without any display or user input devices connected, and it doesn't take much to power it, so it was an ideal choice for my application. Another cool thing is that it comes with a variety of cameras that it can be used with. It does support a USB webcam, but I found that the direct connected cameras like what I'm showing here that are specifically designed for the Raspberry Pi had a very low latency. And for a driving application, low latency is important, meaning to say, I need the video display to be near real time. If the video is two seconds delayed from real life, that is not going to make for a very good user experience in this type of application. So in its simplest form, we have the car, and inside the car, we mount a camera and also attach a heads-up display to see the enhanced video images without needing to avert our eyes from looking forward. Here's a basic theory of operation. We use the Raspberry Pi with the accessory camera, tweak the image settings such as brightness and contrast and saturation in order to really bring out the lines on the road. Then put the enhanced video images on the heads-up display. Now this is not a new thing. Cadillac had this feature available in some models going as far back as 2000. It used infrared cameras and the heads-up display to accentuate features for improved night driving safety. That is one of the reasons I felt nothing I'm about to show you in, in my prototype could be patented, as similar things have existed for a while now. Here is another Cadillac from 2016, where the image is front and center in the instrument panel instead of as a heads-up display. So bottom line, this is not new, and what I'm doing is just hacking around. It won't be anything near as good as what an automaker can build into a vehicle. But again, this is a prototyping exercise, so let's see how it went. The first thing I did was build a model of a road on my workbench, and then I set up the system to test the display. I made a translucent data screen, and I found that useful so I could see what settings I was adjusting and also see the image as well. This calibration process involves some trial and error, and I figured it's easier to start at a workbench rather than actually in a vehicle. The next thing to do was test the heads-up display, and for that I used this mirror. I then had to configure the Raspberry Pi to flip the image on the monitor so it would look correct in the mirror. Next, it was time to install it in the first vehicle. We had our Raspberry Pi, our camera, our display, and our mirror. Here is an image of a nighttime test. Here you can see the actual shoulder lines of the road, and here you can see the lines on the display. The lines on the display are much more enhanced than simply looking through the windshield. So with it somewhat functional, it was time to seek feedback from others. And luckily for me, my dad was a willing participant, and he tested it out and gave some feedback. He noted that oncoming headlights really get bright in the display. So to address that, we placed a tinted cutout on the screen. This cutout occupied the area where oncoming headlights would typically go. The other feedback I got from him is that it might be nice to be able to adjust the sensitivity of the display or shut it off completely. So here are some tests with the tinted area. 
you can see that the tinted area reduces glare, but in this test, the tinted cutout was not aligned correctly. And as you can see, circled in red, the oversaturated oncoming headlights, which were very bright in the car when it was nighttime. So I got one of these light up numeric keypads. It was small enough to mount in a car and it interfaced well to the Raspberry Pi and it enabled me to provide some options by pressing buttons. Another thing it let me do is get rid of the plastic tinted region I just showed you and instead I provided digital shading by overlaying a translucent graphic in that area. So for example when driving and there's oncoming headlights you could press a button and have a graphic overlay with translucence to take some of the brightness off of the headlights. And if that was not enough, another button let you expand the area of the shaded region. And another button could shut the display off altogether if you didn't want to use it. So let's take a look at the first road test. I have my heads up display and uh, we are accentuating the white lines of the highway using a night vision camera and a heads up display, Raspberry Pi with a micro HDMI display, and uh, we're mobile with it. That's right, we got a Raspberry Pi in the car, and you can see the white lines on the heads up display nice and clear. And there you have it. So it did work, and then it was time to install it in a second vehicle and apply what I learned from doing things in the first vehicle. So I did uh, the install in the second on a different car where I tried to make things a little bit neater. I've got the display mounted on top of the dashboard. Heads up screen installed on the windshield. Got the camera installed and I made a black enclosure for it so it doesn't stand out so much. Installed the keyboard for control. And here's how it looked on the inside. And here's a quick road test with the second vehicle. So that's how it went. It was a lot of fun and a learning experience. And as always, I like to do a recap of what can possibly be learned from doing these kinds of prototyping. If possible, do your prototyping in stages. In my case, the first stage, I was prototyping at my workbench before I even got into the car, and that made it much easier to work. Once the prototype was functional, I got input from other users. Now again, I had no interest in trying to patent any of this, but if you did, you want to make sure to take proper steps before showing your invention to others. That can include filing a patent application and or non-disclosure agreements. When you get some useful feedback, try to put it back into your prototype as a new feature or enhancement, as I did with the keypad control and the adjustable translucent shade for oncoming headlights. I didn't think of that on my own, but when I showed it to others, they gave me that feedback. Finally, I suggest you keep records and notes of what worked and what didn't, as well as how you got past any tough problems, in case you run into something similar in the future. So I hope you found this video interesting. If so, please like, share, and subscribe, and thanks again for watching.